Let's talk just briefly about galvanized steel. It's probably the only steel product that you're going to find out in the field. There is stainless steel products like this, but usually those are specialty and you're not going to deal with those in an irrigation setting. But generally what's happening with galvanized steel and the places that you'll encounter it is usually the main plumbing line that goes from the street or the meter to the house or to the building. This type of steel was used up into the mid or late 60s and beyond that it, most people transferred over to using copper and then PVC afterwards. But these plumbing systems, steel and copper, they're not forever solutions. Uh, with the steel, it's really only intended to be a 40-year solution. And if you encounter this in the field, the chances are you're dealing with pipe that's probably older than 40 years old. And there's a problem with this steel. This is a nice new section. This is a, um, a steel nipple here, but um, it's nice and smooth on the outside and nice and smooth on the inside. But when you see these in the field, they're going to look much different. Um, inside the pipe, there is a scale that builds up, a corrosion that happens, and it will enclose in the pipe to the point to where you can't even see daylight through it. I wish I had a section that I've cut out, but it's been at least three years since I've had to cut a section of steel out and replace it or you know, transfer over to PVC so that we can start off an irrigation system. And usually when I deal with it, it's only one of two places. It's either an existing water supply line that I'm having to cut to supply a new irrigation system, or we use steel nipples on pumps to transfer heat away from the pump body, and then you have to transfer over to PVC to continue your installation. But um, one thing that we'll talk about in the lesson on pipe dope and Teflon thread tape is the use of these on steel versus PVC. Now, if you're transferring over from a steel fitting to a PVC fitting, you're going to need to use Teflon tape and that prevents the uh, the pipe dope from softening up the PVC. But if you're using a steel on steel fitting, I would almost exclusively use pipe dope because it does a good job of filling in the gaps here. And when you're putting this together, these threads are tapered threads, just like the PVC is, but you don't have to be so careful when you're putting it together. In fact, once you get your pipe dope on and you're putting your fittings together, I would definitely recommend using pipe wrenches or your um, other type of wrenches to get this fitted down just as tight as you possibly can get it. Um, always make sure that your threads are clean and then tighten this stuff down to, to the absolute of your strength and that'll keep this stuff from leaking out but hopefully you're not having to assemble too many steel parts for an irrigation system. Generally when you're having to cut this and transfer over you're probably going to have to use an external compression fitting and as we're looking at a new piece here it's easy to take the, the rubber band from a, a compression fitting and fit this thing over and it'll seal up nice and smooth. But if you're dealing with a piece of steel that's been in the ground for 30, 40, 50 years, it's not going to look like this on the outside. In fact, it's probably going to be built up another 30 or 40 percent of its ultimate di outside diameter here just by scale and rust and corrosion that happens on the outside. So what we need to do is make us a nice smooth place here for the rubber band for this external compression fitting to fit around it and make a good seal. Usually the way I do that is with a pair of channel locks uh, and I just grab a hold of the steel right in the place to where I'm going to want to put my rubber band and just grind back and forth. Um, you'll eventually kind of grind all of that scale and all of that corrosion off of there and then you can take your rag and um, your steel wire brush and brush this down enough so that you can fit this over so that it can make a good seal and seal this thing up. The only other thing that you have to do when cutting out a piece of steel and replacing it is unthread the piece that you have from its next socket in line and replace it with a new piece. That's easier said than done on a large system because this pipe can come in 10 or 20 foot sections. So, <clears throat> 
backing an entire piece of this pipe off and replacing it, usually that would require you digging the entire pipe up. It's easier just to cut it and you'll need a reciprocating saw with a, a steel blade on it that'll cut through this and it'll leave you with a nice smooth cut and then you can transfer over with a compression fitting. You'll also want to keep a couple of tools around to deal with galvanized steel. This is some of the stuff that I keep on the truck. We need some wrenches. Number one, you need a good pipe wrench. And if you notice here, this particular pipe wrench has flat teeth on here, but it's possible to find these that have a V-shaped indention here for better grip in the pipe. And if you've never dealt with a pipe wrench before, you got to know that this part of the jaw is a little bit loose here, and then you have a little deal to um, uh, adjust that, but that looseness in the jaw is what allows you to grab a hold of the steel and it grip. Even with the flat surfaces and the teeth here, that little bit of looseness allows you to grab a hold of this and that's what it really takes to loosen or tighten up these galvanized steel fittings. Now we also have a couple of other wrenches here. This is a medium sized pair of channel locks. I keep these around for lots of different stuff. You know, you can grab a hold of these fittings and tighten and loosen. They make a smaller pair of these, but I never uh, get much use out of them. I find them quite worthless. So I have two of these medium size, and I also have two of the larger size channel locks. And if you're dealing with a lot of pumps or wells and you've got these big steel fittings, you're going to need a big man size wrench to handle those and to get some of those fittings off or on. A couple of other things that you need to have here. One is a, a steel wire brush. And this is good for going through and getting up the rust and the corrosion out of the um, out of the threads here. And also keep around a regular toothbrush just to get that fine dust and the rust out of there that, that you take off. But also if you're trying to put, like say, a, an external compression fitting around a piece of steel, you'll need one of these to help break off that rust and corrosion that's on the outside of it. Generally can't do anything about the stuff that's on the inside except replace the pipe. But those are some of the tools that you'll need to keep on your truck to work with galvanized steel.